Chad, we got a special guest on uh, yeah. here in this uh, segment, uh, Dr. Anna Kabeka, and she is going to talk about something uh, very, well, near and dear to my heart, uh, because uh, we've gone through it, um, me and my wife, uh, as uh, she is uh, nearly 36 weeks pregnant, being pregnant in a pandemic, how COVID-19 stress may affect growing babies. Uh, doctor, um, thank you so much for your time this morning. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's such an important topic. It really is. And, you know, we're talking a little bit off air about it and, you know, having conversations uh, with our doctor about, you know, what's going on. And uh, Lafayette had, has been a real big hotspot here with uh, COVID-19 and and such. And one of the, you know, for the longest time, one of the worst in the nation. And so it's been very challenging to um, kind of manage the stress and everything that's going on with COVID-19. But as you're pointing out, you know, managing that stress uh, is something that is incredibly important for the pregnant moms right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to tell moms, you know, your baby's in the safest place known to man, right? Mm. <laughs> There's this incredibly safe environment right there in utero. Mm -hmm. And so to take comfort in that and take care of yourself, really focusing on taking care of yourself, eating healthy, um, and nourishing your body, nourishing your mind, nourishing your spirit, and avoiding things that could ignite that stress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and that's really important if it's the news or it's, uh, you know, a, um, um, a fearful neighbor or those fearful intrusive thoughts to be able to compartmentalize those and, and stay in a state of really self-compassion. And that's probably one of the best things we can do for ourselves during this time because there are unknowns, but the good news is the research actually published a couple of days ago in the Journal of the American Medical Association, mm -hmm. a Swedish study looked at moms um, who were COVID positive mm -hmm. and compared that to COVID negative moms, and there was no difference in birth outcomes. Okay. So that was that was really that, that's great news. Yeah, and I'll say our doctor uh, spoke with us about that and said, you know, some of the patients that she had, some of the moms to be uh, that had COVID nineteen, that none of that had crossed over to the ba to their babies. Uh, so that was definitely comforting to hear. And as we learn more about COVID nineteen, we're learning just you know, I guess how it works. Um, you know, how it works and, 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 and what doesn't work with COVID-19. I should say, like, you know, not crossing over uh, to the babies. And like you said, still proving uh, just how safe those babies are in those pregnant bellies. Yeah, and then from there, once the baby's out, breastfeeding still the most protective next step that we can take. And I also had a client, Helen, who was 40 years old, pregnant at 32 weeks, and came down with the coronavirus. Her whole family did. Mm -hmm. And her husband was really sick, and she called me up and asked what to do. Her OB said, stay home. You know, don't come into the office if you don't have to. Stay home. And so and, until her next follow-up regularly scheduled appointment, but she was worried about the fever and she had aches and pains. So there are a few things, there are a few tips, practical tips mom can do during pregnancy. And especially if you're exposed to COVID or come down with COVID, can I share this with you? Absolutely, please do. Yeah, so the first thing is, is definitely focusing on sleep. Rest and sleep, it's hard enough, especially further on, as you well know, your wife at 36 weeks, right? Yes. It's hard to get a good night's sleep. Get yeah. comfortable, use lots of pillows, mm -hmm. and focus on sleep and rest. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. The second thing is sunsets. Catch those sunsets because that will actually help ignite our natural melatonin secretion by affecting our pineal gland mm -hmm. and ignite a better, deeper sleep. And the third thing we can do is supplement. There are safe supplements that we can take, including vitamin D, getting outside and getting vitamin D. That's very powerful because low vitamin D is associated with um, um, growth restriction in a baby. So we want to get vitamin D and or supplement with vitamin D. And we can do that safely in pregnancy, as well as higher dose vitamin C, maybe 2,000 to 4,000 international units, and magnesium. Magnesium will help with sleep as well as immunity. And then my favorite herbal adaptogen to use is maca. We use Mighty Maca Plus in her two to four scoops a day. And that 
with um, a combination of just good self-care and continuing to connect and interact and bring in some good laughter and fun and playtime. I mean, that's really powerful because that ignites the hormone oxytocin. And that's where we get, a, you know, that's the counter attack to cortisol. So focusing on oxytocin will help conquer the stress response of cortisol. So, Dr. Anna, earlier you mentioned, and, and, and you keep mentioning the, the stress levels and those types of things. Have you found that historically, because they're talking about stress related to so many other issues, health-wise, men and women. Is this something, I think the COVID stress or the stress of a quant, have, have you seen that affect, you, you know, the um, pregnant women now going through that? Uh, has, has stress been a factor of it? And is that something you would recommend to decrease moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. Women are two to three times as stressed now than they have been historically in pregnancy. And, you know, other times if we compare, I was just looking at research, looking at 9-11 survivors and then you know, Holocaust survivors and times of acute stress and how that can affect us. Post-traumatic stress can have long-term consequences. If we don't do a counteract, you know, if we don't counteract it and the things that improve fetal outcome after childbirth is connection, is a loving, nurturing environment. And when we do that, those risk factors dissipate completely. All right. Uh, Dr. Anna Kabeca has been our guest here. And thank you so much for your information. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate your time as well. Thank you, and good luck to you and your wife in pregnancy. It's a good time. Thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate that.